Hi everyone, this is Carol and I want to review using the Chapter 3 self-check that I put on um, the Week 2 content. I want to review the rules, just sometimes if you have a visual it'll be a little easier. Sorry it took me so long to figure out how to do this. Um, so for rule number one, it simply stated that if you have a person's name and the filing segment, what you're going to file the, the document under is a person's name, not a business name. You're going to assume that the last unit is the surname and the surname comes first and then the first name and then um, a middle initial or uh, uh, we'll get into the other stuff. So if you look at B here, you know that Latasha Gregory is a person's name. So what we're going to do is we are going to code it by putting a diagonal slash between units. And by the way, you know where a unit is by where the space is. Okay. We're going to underline the key unit, which would be the last name. And we're going to put a number two above the first name because that's the second unit. Edward Simmons is also a person's name. So we're going to do the same thing. Simmons would be the key unit because that's the last name and then first name. Okay. Now when you're going to a business, that's going to be as written. Unless the first word of the business is the, then it becomes the very last unit. So if you look at A, that's clearly a business because it's in incorporated. So we're going to put our slashes where our units are and we're going to code it as written. Okay. Now, anytime you see abbreviations like ink is short for incorporated, it is the way it's spelled here. Don't spell anything out. You go very literally by how it's written on the paper. If you go down to D, you've got Greg Simmons Car Company. That's a company again. So let's code it by putting our slashes between the units and it's going to be written or coded as written because it's a business. Same with Albert Brown Suit Shop. So Albert's going to be the key unit, then Brown, then Suit Shop. Okay, hopefully that clears up any questions on that one. All right, now as we move on to our number two, um, what is the second? Oh, this is where you have businesses that have the word the, okay? So the chimney sweepers, because we have so many businesses that have the key unit as, or the first word, the, we'd never make that the key unit because when you go to file it, it you would have a bunch of papers that would be with the as the key unit, you'd have to go through all of those before you actually get to the next important word, which is chimney or crazy. So we start with that second word. That's our key unit. Sweepers is two and the becomes three. The will always be the last unit for a business name. Okay. Then you have the crazy fox. So crazy is the key unit. Fox is two and the is three. Now when you go to alphabetize these behind your C folder, you're going to look at your key unit and you're going to say chimney crazy. Both start with a C. Then you've got H and R. Which one comes first? This one does. So chimney sweepers will be filed before crazy fox. When you look down, or if you move down to E, CNR offerings, again, take a look at, sorry, I lost my pen. Take a look at where your spaces are so you know where your units are. It is um, a business, so C is your key unit. The symbol and, ampersand stands for the word and. If you forget, just write that out and then R, and then offerings. So when you go to file this, if you have two um, documents that have a key unit of just the letter C, then you'd have to go to the second unit to figure out which one is filed first, 
and you would treat this as the word AND, not the symbol. Okay, so if you look at G, C and R company, that's going to be the same thing. If I'm trying to figure out between E and G, which one's going to come first, C, the first three units are exactly the same. So I'm going to the fourth unit, offerings and company. C comes before O. So C and R company would be filed before C and R offerings. I hope this helps.